well, I don't understand why everyone just bolts. Just I'm doing speed work today. Mm-hmm. Doing speed work. Well, you're doing speed work every mm-hmm. dead gum day. So, <laughs> exactly. I threw a dead gum in there. That was dead gum. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Brrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrrr
of speed work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think like a lot of people think about spe- when they think speed work, they think I've got to go hard. Like it's oh, anytime yeah. I'm doing a, a harder or a higher intensity workout that is considered speed work. And I'm and I'm guilty as anyone to saying if you want to run fast or if you want to run faster, you got to run fast. Mm-hmm. You got to run faster than you're running right now. Yep. So like, but there are, there's plenty of speed work that isn't fast, uh, isn't super high intensity, relatively speaking, yeah. to like a, a, a VO2 max type workout. Yep. Uh, doesn't involve intervals that make you want to, you know, puke your guts out, mm-hmm. you know, that sort of thing. There's a lot of things you can do. And, and I think, uh, a technique and a movement standpoint yeah, from, that's huge. From what I would, the, one of the main things I want to get across today is that there's a lot of this stuff that people totally ignore yep. and don't do because they're just so focused on, I got to run this pace. I got to run this pace. I got 12 quarters today. You mm-hmm. know, like all these like interval style workouts that are fine. They do make you faster, but there's a lot of other things that can be done to make you faster and they tend to get Overlooked. put, a, put yep. aside. Yep. All, All right. right. So first things first, you know, if we're talking about making you faster, one of the first things that we do with every athlete is neuromuscular work. And so the easiest way to p- kind of is movement focused. So we're focused on the movement. So this is like, uh, things like drills. Mm-hmm. We do a lot of drill work with our runners um, and you know, that's, you know, how would you do drill work with a runner? We, we have vi- like video, we've created videos that kind of spell out the, the drill and what you're after and what to focus on. Um, and we're at like, our drills are, are focused on very specific parts of the running stride cycle. Yes. Like and you were chatting about before, like decreasing ground contact time. Yep. We were improving heel lift. Yep. Um, working on stride length by, by focusing on pushback. Mm-hmm. Um, all of those things are things you can... Yeah, so... Are, are movement-based drills if that you, you can do. If you break down any phase or portion of the stride cycle and you can drill that movement, mm-hmm. um, you can do things like uh, very short sprints. Uh, and, and so like that sort of thing is more of a, a brain-to-muscle communication thing. It's not necessarily... You're, you're not changing a lot of physiology there aside from the brain telling the muscles to fire quicker yeah. because you're forcing them to. Um, we do some of that stuff, you know, things like burst efforts and, and uh, overspeed training is also uh, something you can do. And for those that don't know what that is, basically it's forcing yourself to run faster, which can be like running on a slight downhill. Um, you can be bungee. <laughs> One of my favorite is... Uh, basically <laughs> slingshotted with a bungee. Uh-huh. Uh, you can be tethered to somebody else who's faster than you. Uh, you know, that's that sort of thing. And and that way you're you're forcing your body. There's no, you're either going to turn your legs over or you're going to fall Make down. sure it's someone that li- actually likes you uh, <laughs> so that you're not just getting drugged through the mud. Yeah. But, you know, this is kind of, these are kind of things that, like neuromuscular work, in my opinion, is some of the most fun training you can do. Uh, and it can be like partner based training, yeah. but aside from like a clinic here and there, like people n- rarely do this stuff, mm-hmm. but it, it moves the needle so well, uh, yeah. you know, as far as like, well, I think this is where like endurance athletes tend to get the mindset that if, the, if the, you don't feel like you're stressing your body, Absolutely. you don't feel like you're improving. So it's like getting away from that mindset of I have to be feeling some sort of discomfort or yep. be going really long in order to feel like I'm doing something productive towards my training. Yep. You, you got to get away from that. Um, and this is, you know, stuff that you can work in most days if you wanted to. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the beauties of neuromuscular work is it can pretty much be done year round. Mm-hmm. Um, During warmups, we do quite a bit of, yep of neuromuscular stuff warm-ups uh i'll i'll like you know we do full sessions like a lot mm-hmm. of my runners will do full drill sessions full yep. neuromuscular sessions um and you know and sometimes like on uh for like upper level people more elite level uh folks will do like a what i call like a primer day the day before a hard like a hard 
uh, like more VO2 max style day. So the neuromuscular day gets everything fired up and, and ready to rock. And then yep. the next day you do the harder session. And generally the harder session is much higher quality because you, you kind of really spark that brain muscle mm -hmm. communication the day before. Mm -hmm. Um, so this stuff can be done year round. And the reason why I brought, I bring it up first is because it is so important and, it, it is a and, huge needle mover and it's relatively low intensity because yes. you want to be, you want to do every set rep, whatever, uh, fully recovered. Yep. You don't want to, you don't want to take yourself into a, like a level of high fatigue where your form diminishes. Exactly. Everything should be done with perfect form. Exactly. To, to the best of, you know, your ability. Yeah. Very much working movement patterns here and teaching your body to move. Mm -hmm more efficient and once you're moving more efficient you're going to be moving faster yep and if fatigue sets in you're done mm -hmm. basically uh you know that sort of thing so that that we do that all the time year round um you know for some of the like people who've been with us for a long time who are pretty you know pretty efficient and stuff like that it may just be warm-ups and like early in the season when we'll yeah. just refresh it all that yep. sort of thing but for the most part, most people, average person, could do it year-round. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next, uh, like, like uh, specific section of speed work would be what we call speed strength. And so basically, you're trying to strengthen those specific movements. So we've kind of activated them, and now we're kind of kind of strengthen specific movements. Um, and this, like, with speed strength you're really focusing on we focus pretty heavily on like extension and improving your stride length basically yep um and so what we're really doing is we're doing we're we're doing sports specific strength and improving kind of durability um so this is a lot of hill running gotta love the hills That's the big one up overcoming gravity running. yeah yeah so uphill running um, occasionally we'll get into bounds with somebody who's a little bit higher level. Definitely. Um, be, uh, yeah. You have to have the, the body that's able to handle yeah, bounds. You got to go through a more little force, bit of, more impact. Yeah. yeah. Um, but some of the more fun things, uh, for speed strength would be like towing mm -hmm. and resisted running. Um, like semis, towing yeah, semis, usually semis, tractors, tanks, tanks, stuff like that. You know, you're ready when you've, when you can tow a tank, when you're, when you're, <laughs> When you got a Panzer <laughs> behind you, yeah, uh, yeah. So, uh, like, you're really focused on because, like, you know, um, force production is the biggest, uh, you know, one of the biggest determinants on your stride length. So, mm -hmm. if you can put down more force, um, part of that being short ground con contact time, the other part being actual production of force through your your leg extension. Yep. Um, you're going to travel farther, so you're going to, you know, cover more t more distance in per, the same amount of time. Per stride, yep. yep. So, uphill running, uh, resisted towing, like the easiest, the, you know, we do, like my, the cheap sleds that we've made, uh, some people will get, you know, you can get a tire, uh, like something like that. I think the thing, the thing to really note here is that if you're doing towing or resisted running, you really don't want to have so much weight behind you that you have to like, you have to um, manipulate your upper body and your form just to like, yeah. pull, to pull it like, or that it's slowing your cadence down so much that yeah. you're getting away from some of that faster ground contact that you may be trying to right. also be working. I mean, there's a different time and place for each of those, but right. Yeah. So you're, you, you don't want so much resistance behind you like a tire with a, you know, a lot of, I mean, I've seen a lot of people use tires or, you know, usually easily you can go to pretty much any tire place and say, Hey, can I have one of your side of the road? Old crappy tire. Yeah. Go you to get a, a really slow dog. Yeah. Get a, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the ones I've made are like, I went and bought like a, um, one of those big horse stall mats at tractor supply. Those and things are heavy by the way. They're heavy. <laughs> I cut it into fourths. Like, mm -hmm. so if you get four of them out of it, drill a hole, put a tether through it with a, you know, a belt strap or a chest harness. Um, by the way, I like when, when I do towing, I prefer to have the, uh, like start people with it at their waist because it forces them to keep their hips forward. 
and then once they have better hip placement, then move it to a chest strap or that's a chest key. harness. That, that whole thing is key. Like anytime we do a clinic, that's one of the main things yeah. we're watching for. We don't want you just towing something to make it feel like you're doing something fun and cool. Yeah. Um, we want to make sure you're still reinforcing proper form. Yeah. So learning to do something stronger or faster if or, or at a higher rate if you're not actually maintaining good good form yeah. is going to lead to uh, to bad stuff down the road. So always put technique at the forefront before resistance. Before resistance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, so with the cool thing with the horse stall mats is that you can drag them on grass, you can drag them on concrete, you can drag them on just about everything. Mm -hmm. And if you do need a little bit more resistance, you can just toss something on top of it mm -hmm. to add weight. You know, it's it's pretty convenient. Yeah. Um, yeah, so speed strength. How much do you remember how much th those are? The the mat itself is only like 40 bucks. Okay. And you can make four, yeah, of, four them out of them out of it. Yeah. Yeah, so it's... I don't know. I mean, that was years ago when I bought them because yeah, they're yeah. still around. They're yeah. going anywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so, but hills. I mean, hills are obviously super cheap. Also, yeah, hills are the cheapest. Hill right? running, unless yeah. you're, unless you're in Houston. Yeah, <laughs> unless you don't have any. Yeah, then, <laughs> then towing would be your, your best option. bet. Or if you live in a, a place that's uh, supremely windy, mm -hmm. you can run into a headwind from Straight. time to time. Sometimes when I get on the Full old in the Shelby headwind. Farms uh, the lake trail, I <laughs> yeah. feel like I'm I feel like I'm doing some resisted running. You get that <laughs> block headwind down there. Ooh. Yeah, I mean it's you know. So basically, yeah, you're, you're building up run specific strength. Uh, you know, for like the when you know this is where it all starts to become a it depends yeah. like type of thing. Um, for I would say for a lot of people who are doing normal distances. Um, this will probably happen a little bit earlier in your like build. Um, but for people that are doing like ultra distance, so like, and that even varies or too. trail. Like, yeah. yeah. So if you're doing ultra trail running, I, I do this like all the way to the end. Mm -hmm. Like we, we do tons of speed strength and, you know, run specific strength work all the way to the end before we kind of like taper into the race. Um, but if you're doing something like an Ironman or, or something like that, uh, still very long, this would be kind of right before you start doing race pace stuff. Yeah. Speed, we'll get to that, speed endurance stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it just it's just going to depend a little bit on your distance and, yeah. you know, what you're doing. It's all very, very, like, it works no matter what. It does yeah. its purpose, but... Mm -hmm. You know the goal here, right, is to go from less specific training to more specific training as you go to exactly. get closer to an event. Yeah. So um, towing a tank, less specific. Yes. When you're training for Iron <laughs> Training for an Ironman. Yeah. Yeah. But hill running when you're training for an ultra that's yep. going to have uh, inevitably most have quite a few hills. Yep. Definitely going to be important. So yep. that is more sports specific then. Correct. Cool. All right, so the next specific uh, like area of speed work would be speed endurance. And so... I feel like these next two are what most people think of when they think of speed work. Correct, yeah. And this is where the confusion really comes yeah. in. Um, like speed endurance, everyone's... It's focused on holding pace longer. Yeah. So these are, these are basically longer intervals... Like <clears throat> generally, we, we, you probably hear the terms tempo or steady state, something like that mm -hmm. would be more uh, speed endurance stuff. So you're kind of like sub threshold into kind of right at threshold type of thing. Yeah. Um, the interval lengths would probably be, I don't know, somewhere into five and twenty five to twenty minutes. So they're yeah, a little ability. Bit yeah, it's gonna be ability specific, but then also yeah. duration of your. But very target. You know, this is. I would say speed endurance is a little bit like like it can be functional. It can be physiological training, but generally a little bit more on the functional side here because you are trying to hit a specific pace mm -hmm. for a specific amount of time, uh, you know, and that sort of thing. Yeah, um, developing that fatigue resistance at that at that pace yeah yeah and so i think what happens here is that like i see a ton of runners that 
they do tempo work year round. I mean, year round. Mm -hmm. And the, you know, the question is why, like, what, like, do you like, unless you have an event coming up like that, like demands that type of training, why are you doing tempo work year round when you could be like really, you know, po either popping up your ceiling mm -hmm. of, of the fastest paces you can hit or, um, working on efficiency and neuromuscular work that is a lot less hard on your body. Like tempo and steady state efforts are the hardest on your body. Like they just tear you down. Mm -hmm. Um, so like doing a ton of that work is like do it with caution because you're 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 putting your body through a yeah, no why have a, have a why yeah for doing it but when to do it would basically be like going into an, a longer event mm -hmm. right so like if you're if you're doing something that's like i mean to put a very general mark on it like 10k or longer you're going to be doing a little bit more tempo work getting closer to that event mm -hmm. because you're going to be working on longer sustained efforts. Yep. Trying to hold pace longer. Um, then the last, the last uh, one is pretty much what everyone puts, like everyone who thinks speed work thinks about like yep. more of like a top speed or VO two max style uh, training yeah working above above a threshold above threshold st yeah. style effort yeah where your ability to uptake the oxygen is it, you're you're developing more co2 essentially than what your your oxygen can yeah. it, it's outpacing co2 is outpacing oxygen delivery here yeah and so some of the terms you might hear would be track workout track. interval workout yes even though a lot of the other workouts involve intervals uh, 400s <clears throat> yeah you know and Track workout is another term I'm not a huge fan of mm -hmm. because a lot of this stuff is almost better done for certain athletes on the road or on a gravel path or whatever. Um, you know, doing holding pace on a very flat, you know, uh, like track is not always real specific mm -hmm. to what you're going to be racing. So, um, not a huge fan of track workout either. But <clears throat> in a VO2 max session, you're you're above threshold. Um, you're, you know, pushing the limits of what you're capable of repeating multiple times. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you're 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 trained to handle like faster paces versus hold them longer. You're you're training to run faster than you've ran prior. Yes. Now that that's not always the case. If you're if you're training for something that's short, like if you're training for a 400 or a mile or even a 5K, like VO2 max sessions may be closer to like a pacing workout for you, yeah. like and working on, yeah, working on your pacing. And yeah, pacing it strategy. becomes more like the speed endurance for someone doing a longer distance. Thing. Right. You're yeah. still above threshold. You're, yeah. still, you're still pushing that, yeah. but uh, it's just, its purpose has changed. Yeah. So that's where like a lot of this confusion comes in because what are you actually, why are you actually doing it? Like, are you, are you doing quarters because you're trying to push, uh, the number of quarters you can hit at a faster pace than you've ran before up, or are you doing the quarters to try to run that pace consistently so that you know, you can run it yeah. in a race? Yeah. Or so, yeah. Or so you can add more of those intervals and that's kind of how you would progress it, right? Is based yeah. on what the goal is there. Are you improving your pace ceiling right. or are you improving your ability to hold a pace for a longer duration? Right. And so like, that's more of like the functional side of it. Mm -hmm. So like physiological side of, of doing VO2 max work is we're trying to stress the body to a specific level mm -hmm. and hold it there. Yeah, and increase your ability to uptake and utilize oxygen. Right. You know. And so there may be like, it, it's not necessarily about holding pace. You may get up there initially and you may, uh, your heart rate may stay up at whatever, 180 beats per minute, but your pace may start to really die, mm -hmm. you know? And then the physiological goal there is to, now, like later in later sessions, see that pace drop off less yep. or slower mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, so 
the, the thing with VO2 max, you have to know why you're doing it. Yeah. You have to have specific goals. Um, it's not always just about going out and running as hard as you can uh, for a ton of quarters or, or half mile or, mm -hmm. you know, mile efforts. And you have to have recovery between your efforts. Yeah. So making sure, now there's a way you can play around with how much recovery you're giving yourself, again, based on the goal uh, of, <laughs> of the workout. Yeah. But in general, you're going to want at least a one-to-one -one work to rest ratio. But even more so, you probably want to go more like a one-to-two work to rest ratio. And that's highly dependent on whether you're after a functional exactly. target or a physiological target. Physiological target, you, you do want to come all the way back down, give yourself enough time to come back down into like zone one. Yeah. Uh, and then hit it again. Yep. Phys like functional, you're trying to, you're trying to string together like uh, a lot, a lot of work in yep. a small amount of time. So you're, you're, you may be doing quarters. Let's just say you're doing quarters in 90 seconds and you're giving yourself a minute rest. So that's like less than a one to one, but yep. Uh, that's the functional side of it. Yep. You got to know why you're doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, obviously like this is a little bit more commonplace, but like your your efforts for like VO2 max are usually, I mean, they're not going to be more than, um, you know, they usually range from 100 to 1600, you know, something like that, meters, mile, whatever. Um, people would argue that, you know, mm -hmm. if it's, you know, if you're doing a pacing workout and your race is above threshold, your efforts may be a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. um, but you got to know why you're doing it. Yeah. Why Why are you putting yourself through the session that hurts like the dickens and uh, makes you want to puke? Yes. And in general, you'll want to start, you know, from a speed work or from a, from a VO2 standpoint, start with more recovery to work and then as you get closer to your goal but you know it's going to go more towards that functional side of things so let your body handle the the physiological stress initially of running at that higher pace and then as you progress and get closer to your to your goal that's where the more functional side that dale was talking about takes over yep and so the when here this is probably the most highly dependent when mm -hmm. <laughs> uh you know, for uh, people doing shorter events, 5K and and shorter, you're going to be doing it kind of leading up pretty much all the time. But leading up into your uh, your big race or whatever, it's going to be used more for pacing than it is for like pushing up the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing um, something more ultra, like long, long course this is something we would do like early in the, yeah. in the season, early in your, in your training uh, to kind of bump the ceiling up, get, get our top speed or max speed as high as we can get it before we really have to start working on Lots building of, out fatigue resistance yeah. and, and then durability and, yeah. and, you know, working on steady state stuff. Yeah. Um, so number of times per week for say the, I mean, with, with the neuromuscular side of things, the first topic we talked about, I mean, you can work in aspects of that each time. You can do that stuff most days. Yeah. If we start talking about VO2 max, like how often would you be putting a VO2 max workout in a person's program? Like the average person? The average, yeah. Average person only focused Once. on running. We're not talking about someone who's doing Once a week. Know, 12 sessions or whatever, but... Yeah, I wouldn't do it most anymore common, than once yeah. a week. Yeah, one time per week, typically most yeah. most common for folks. And and mo and most of the time, the next day needs to be pretty easy. Yeah. Um, and again, that's dependent on the person. But mm -hmm. um, for the average person that we work with, like a, if you do a VO two max session to its like to spec, yeah, you're gonna need some recovery the next day mm -hmm. um, and you want to be in general you want to be fresh going into it too yeah. so you know you need a buffer on either side of a vo2 yeah. max day to actually get the benefits that that we would want from the vo2 max work so yeah as far as like placing like um 
you know, I will do on spe in specific cases, I will do speed strength and speed endurance in the same uh, week. Mm -hmm. uh, I will do occasionally, I'll do speed endurance and VO2 max in the same week. Um, but they are always separated by at least a day. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a Tuesday, Thursday, a Wednesday, Friday, or whatever. Um, they're, they're always separated by a day. Now, if it's something like speed endurance, like, yeah, you can have more than one speed endurance session in a week. Um, they should be separated, you know, almost as much as you can separate them in a, in a given week. They should be separated. Um, but the big trap is when you don't have time on Monday, you, you, something goes crazy on Tuesday, but you don't want to miss those key sessions. So you move it to Thursday or to Wednesday, and then you had your VO2 max on Thursday and you end up doing a back to back mm -hmm. and then you run into a tr into trouble. If you don't run into trouble, basically what you're doing is you're killing the quality of your VO2 max work, which yeah. could probably move the, the needle better for you. Uh, but you decided to do the, yeah. your endurance work that really tears you down, speed endurance work that really tears you down the day before. So it's, you know, anytime you're, you're working quote unquote speed work into your week as a runner or a triathlete, it has to be separated. Give yourself 48 hours to, to recover from it. Um, I know it's difficult with triathletes because you're trying to decide where to put, so where do I put my hard bike days? If I'm, uh, if I'm sp splitting my hard run days by at least a day, uh, generally what I try to do is I make one day really hard. Mm -hmm. So you're going to do your hard bike and your hard run in the same day. That's fairly race specific too. So like you're going to have those, uh, those like you're going to have a hard day and then a little bit easier day. And yep. you're probably going to have a hard day and you're going to have a little bit easier day. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if you're a triathlete looking to put this in, it's going to be on the same day. Like you should have hard days. Mm -hmm. Um, occasionally you know depending on the athlete we'll split them uh if they can handle it yeah uh, if we know they can handle it yeah um but generally speaking until you get a feel for somebody hard day easy day hard day yeah because you're managing recovery by that at that point in time we want to make sure recovery is where it should be so that you're not trying to burn the candle hard the entire week yeah that's the that's another big trap mm -hmm. you know is just doing too much doing too, like going too hard every day. Yes. Like I have heard, I have literally heard runners like have sp like speed work, quote unquote speed work Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and then like some, some work into their Sunday run. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, when are you, when are you off or running easy? Uh, I'm never. <laughs> Gotta go fast, baby. Just Full gas. Trying to get faster. I'm on that full gas schedule. Yeah. <laughs> Don't fall in the trap. Yeah. All right. I think that about sums it up. Yep. If you have questions, comments, let us know. And uh, otherwise, yeah. I guess that's it. Appreciate you guys hanging out, listening, watching. Catch you guys next time. Adios. Peace.